Hello and welcome to Samwell Junction. Just a quick video today to um, basically show you some of the new purchases I have got. Uh, there's quite a few here, so uh, enjoy. Uh, do forgive me if I go over a previous purchase because I'm not sure what I've previously shown you what I haven't because there's quite a few things here. So the first thing I want to show you is the um, the Ford Hampton locomotive depot which is going to act as the main engine shed for my um, TMD layout which will be situated on this board here. Um, so that's a flat pack. I'm going to customise it quite heavily. Uh, I'm going to spray it different colours and I'm not quite keen on the dark roof bits here so I might change that to a darker grey perhaps. Um, so yeah I'm going to try and make it look a bit different. I, mean, I might even put some LEDs lights in, uh, in these little sections here for the lights. So I want it to stand out from perhaps other people who've got the same kit. I'll also probably weather it quite heavily as well. So I wanted to be unique in mine. Okay. So excellent news. Samuel Junction is going DCC. I have bought the Gauge Master Prodigy, I believe. Yeah, Prodigy Express. So let me just quickly show you. But I have indeed got it, it's not just an empty box. So yes, uh, I will be creating this layout uh, in a DCC, so that's excellent. So this is really good. It literally comes with a little booster pack thing, or the, the brains, I, I imagine. So you, you can have uh, your main track on, you can program another track on there. And literally you just put your power in there, and you can connect up your um, bus wires in the back there and you can also connect up the handheld controller with this. So I'm just going to quickly show you the handheld controller. Most of you have probably already got one of these but this is more so for those of you that haven't. It's a very well designed. Um, it was a choice between this or the Hornby Select. And quite frankly, I found the Hornby Select to be a bit too plasticky and a bit too, well, childlike, I'm going to say. Uh, so this, it's an ideal starter for this layout. I will upgrade in the future. So it sits nice and firmly in the hand, just like that. And you can easily twizzle the knob there for your desired speed. So a great purchase. Um, one I'm very much looking forward to using as well because then it will allow me to run multiple trains at the same time. Let's just put that away, out of the way. So that's excellent. And if you have one of these, please do feel free to comment your experiences below in the comment section. Okay, let's just get that out of the way for now. So of course, if you've got a DCC uh, power supply and controller, You'll also need a DCC locomotive. Uh, I have purchased this from Rails of Sheffield, and it is of course the Hornby Class 66 in EWS livery. Um, this was in action, I've Googled it, um, in the very late 90s um, onwards. In this livery, it was like 98, 99, so it does fit just about in my uh, time period of 1985 to year 2000. Um, quite frankly, I was a little bit worried because a lot of the class 66s tend to be in use in the early 2000s onwards, but this one just fit the time scale. So let's just have a quick look at that. It does, of course, go in the ice cube pack. Let's just get it out. Um, for 67 pounds, I believe it was, Fair model. It's 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 not amazing. You know, it is what it is. There's no working lights or anything like that. Um, so you know, it is what it is. It's a cheap DCC model which I can run in the layout straight away. Um, I think, quite frankly, a lot of this undercarriage here, which looks incredibly plastic, plasticky in my opinion, will need a good healthy coating of sleeper grime. Or roof dirt or a mix of both to be honest some rail match um, paints which I do have some by the way I'll show you later um, yeah 
So that's one of my main criticisms about this. And the only other criticism is that the fact that it has no working lights. So you can't exactly use um, any of the DCC functions for lights and what have you because there aren't any. But I have heard of people who um, have actually modified these. They've drilled a small hole, put a small LED in and wired up to the DCC. Not entirely sure how you do that, but people have done that. It's quite a large model to be honest. It's uh, When you get on a piece of track, you, you, you really need to make sure you have the correct radius curve, otherwise it's not getting around. Um, which means I probably will have to slightly rethink this layout if I do want to run this, because let's put this in like perspective. It takes out a sizable portion. So if I have a track coming round here into the TMD area here, it's quite sizable. It will only just fit inside the locomotive shed. And quite frankly, I might just have his nose poking out a little bit because it, you know, kind of looks kind of cool. Okay, let's just put this away. So, for sixty-seven pounds, I'm happy. Would I buy another one? Probably not. But it's just a cheap budget loco. I can't get that close now. <laughs> Perhaps because I have that little close. I don't know. Anyway. There you go. So pop that back in the ice cube, and then we'll go on to the next purchase. And I'm sure many of you are probably screaming at home, what is he doing? Alright, so let's just pop that back in there, and get that over there, because that is in there. And just pop this back in its sleeve. Okay, so that's three items straight away, which I've recently purchased. Okay, I'm going to go on to perhaps another locomotive. This is a Backman Class 20. I purchased this from the Derby Model Railway Exhibition. I'm extremely happy with this model. It cost me um, I think about £100 or thereabouts. And it is in BR Blue, so it sets firmly in the 80s, very nice, or even late, early 80s really, you could run it with that. I will end up weathering it again because I do like quite dirty things and I like things looking a bit old and dilapidated, because let's, let's face it, in the 1980s the system was kind of falling apart a bit, it was unloved, because it was a sexualisation and what have you. So look at that in the ice cube there, absolutely gorgeous model. Just get it out of the sleeve quickly. I am incredibly happy with this. It's an absolutely beautiful model. Would you just look at that? The detail on there is absolutely exquisite. It even has spring-loaded buffers, which I absolutely adore. That's amazing. That to me is the absolute pinnacle a model locomotive in my opinion. It is just very, very cool. And that just screams my childhood to me. This is the kind of thing I remember on the railways. Um, I have yet to run this as well. Uh, this is DCC ready, it's not actually been chipped just yet, but I can put a chip in it and get that sorted. So yeah, that's excellent. Okay, let's put that back away. And hopefully what I will do soon is get some track at least laid down because then I can begin running the cell phones and showing you what it's all about and that would be a very fun time indeed okay back into its ice cube it goes so for a hundred pounds you really cannot complain that is an absolute superb model absolute superb <laughs> usually helps to put it in there. And of course, he puts it upside down. If any of you got OCD, I'm sending you all crazy right now. <laughs> 
Okay, let's just pop it back in. Okay. So let's take a look at a few more bits. Of course, I've bought some wire. Some, I'm going to use this for dropper wire. Red and black, which is perfect. I need to purchase some, um, some bus wire, which is a slightly thicker wire, I do believe, which can hold more, more ampage and volts or whatever. And of course, with that, you do need a soldering iron, which has got the, uh, the pencil top or the pencil uh, point, so it allows you to do really detailed work. Uh, that hasn't even been used yet either. <laughs> and of course, a spot of solder. I've never done any soldering whatsoever, so that's going to be a real challenge for me. Um, next up, we have a static grass applicator. So, of course, with that, you need a selection of Woodland Scenics static grass. So here we have a medium green in 2mm, so that's nice and short, and it's, you know, a good colour. Um, here we have a 4mm dark green, so slightly longer and slightly darker, which I kind of like. Although technically, perhaps that should have been a bit lighter, because um, if it's longer grass, in my opinion, it's either going to be older, or it's going to be fresher, kind of faster grass. So perhaps it's okay, I'm not sure. And this one is 7mm in light green. So, when combined, I do believe that's going to look really good. So I'm really happy with that. Now, I'm not entirely sure if you've seen the selection of ballasts I have. I originally bought the uh, Woodland Scenics medium ballast in buff. Um, I thought that would be okay. However, it's completely not what I'm looking for at all. Uh, it's okay in places, but along, along the larger stretch, it looks like a heritage railway, which I'm not really going for. I did it on the little side project, which is just behind me here, and I'm not particularly happy with that, so quite frankly, the side project was probably just a little experiment, really, for me. So, to remedy that, I have bought these two. I have a fine ballast in light grey, and another medium in just grey. So, when blended, it can create a quite nice effect. Uh, I have a little tub here somewhere. Let me try and find it. Ah, there it is. Where I have actually mixed them together. Let me just get a bit close to the camera. Now, I'm not sure if you can see that, but we have a nice mix there. And I quite like that. I'd probably have a little less buff in there as well. So that, to me, is ideal. Absolutely ideal. So, that is not the only ballast colour I want on the layout. <clears throat> Because near the actual TMD itself, I would like some black cinders. So of course, naturally, I purchased this from Pico. This is Pico's black cinders, uh, ashen cinders, fine grade. It's only a small bag, but I'm only doing a small area, so it doesn't really matter. So it's actually okay. Uh, so that should look quite nice. Uh, I'll probably have that around the engine shed. And then I'll have some hard standing, which will be kind of oil stained and you know, rather mucky. That's good. Quite happy with that. Of course, I have some tunnel portals, which I may repaint because I'm not quite happy with the colour. But that's okay. I've got a couple of tester pots of blue paint, two different shades. So I can effectively create a, a sky with slightly varying colour. Uh, that'll be used on the, uh, the, back, the backboard, the back scene. I will be purchasing um, an actual seam, which you can get. And it will fit perfectly on this five foot board here. But for now, I'll just paint it blue. Uh, I did previously mention the, um, the rail match paints. Here I have a uh, roof dirt. So that's always good to use. And of course, everyone's favorite, Sleeper grime, so that's going to use, get used a lot. Uh, I will be weathering uh, and colouring the track because I've seen quite a few videos now and when you see the difference between an unpainted track to a painted track, it's miles, miles different. And quite frankly, without 
when it's unpainted, it doesn't look particularly, uh, particularly realistic in my opinion. So I'm going to paint the track. Okay, so we've done the main things, but now we have obviously smaller pieces which are always going to come in handy. So this is track rubbers. You can, know, you can never have too many track rubbers. And then we want to go into things like details. So I have um, some wire drums here. I can't remember who the manufacturer was, I'm sorry, but uh, I bought these off um, scale, model, scale model, model scenery, I do believe. I think it was there. I'm just ignoring my phone went off. So we have a couple of cable drums here, which are, you know, a little, little bit of detail. So I'll pop those around the TMD somewhere, put an extra level of detail. And of course I've got some uh, buffer stops, which will be painted. Um, I'm not sure what colour yet. I could go for a brown or potentially I could go for a red, which quite a few people do. Uh, red may kind of tie it to a certain era, but I'm not entirely sure. Perhaps drop what you think in the comments down below. Tell me what you think about that, what colour I should do. So I've got a selection of those. Uh, next up, this is going to be a nice little project. I have the uh, Pico Lineside kit. Uh, this is the inspection pit with Code 100 rail. Um, so there's been a few YouTubers have done quite a heavy modding of these. Um, Dave Class 47, for example, he he inserted lots of LEDs, which I love the look of, and I'll be doing some very similar. So these will have a healthy coat of grey, and I will most likely. Um, do them in a similar manner to what I did the steps or the stairs if I can find them. Where are they? They're hiding. Oh, there, there. I can see one here. So, um, yeah. With these, I did kind of speckle them. Ignore the white because that's when some overspill on, so I'd have to repaint these, but you can sort of see the, the various grey tones in there. So it looks more stone-like. So that's what I'll be doing with the inspection pit. I'll have the same kind of effect. And quite frankly, I'm looking forward to that. It's gonna be a nice little uh, project. They're quite small, but you know, I might have to buy um, another one as well, depending, because I think this will span the length of the actual shed, more or less, just one. So I'll do two, and I'll have them all painted up, uh, weathered as well. Uh, with oil spills and what have you. And I'm going to have a go at inserting LEDs in them at some point as well, LED lights. So that's going to be a really interesting video to come in the future. Okay, next up we have a few more little details. We have these tiny little palettes, um, which again is just another little detail. It's all about the little details because obviously that's what makes a scene. And then we have some dummy point motors here. Uh, we have some Wills Kits uh, relay boxes. This is the set one. Um, I think I had the set two somewhere, but I can't seem to find them. They're perhaps somewhere else. But I did also buy the set two. So I have two lots of these. Don't know where the other one is. Uh, this is going to create a nice level of detail on the, uh, on the layout itself. Um, these are probably... They'll be dotted about. I'm going to probably put them you know, somewhere at this end, or perhaps one over here or something. It's going to look really cool. And then, of course, you've got some Wheels Kits cable trunking, so that's going to go alongside the track, extra detail. And I bought even some more, because I went to the Derby show, and I saw one lot at a certain price, and then I saw another one at a different price, and I thought, oh, I'll have to buy these as well. So I did. And uh, finally, we have some... Palisade fencing. Again, I think this is from Wills. Yes, it's Wills Modern. So this is the Palisade um, Modern Security Fencing, essentially. And this is going to look great. Um, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to have this just yet. I may have it uh, around the small car park which I'm planning down here. Or I may have it kind of around the, st uh, the TMD itself. Um, or I could do a mixture of both. Uh, I'm just going to figure it out. In there are some gates uh, as well, so potentially we could uh, gate the main entrance off and have some warning signs while you, you know, do not trespass, blah, blah, blah. You know, small security, security office and what have you. And they're not all quite effective. 
So I think that pretty much um, concludes today's video. Um, there's a lot here, and it's going to keep you exceptionally busy for the coming months. Okay, so the next video is where I will be um, creating the raised sections finally. And, yeah, um, that's only going to be a short video because it's just a little bit of woodwork, which everyone can do, hopefully. <clears throat> but it'll be nice to see the progress. Um, and then I can start laying some cork, and then I can lay some track. So yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look good soon, and then I can start scenics, which is my favourite part. Well, I've never done it, but that's what I'm looking forward to. <clears throat> so, thank you ever so much for watching this video. And as usual, if you've enjoyed this video, please press, uh, press like. Um, comments are always welcome. Um, you know, have a little discussion about what your favourite parts are, what you're looking forward to seeing, etc. And if you've not subscribed already, and I do value all my subscribers, um, I'm almost at 200 now. Um, all my subscribers, thank you very much. This channel is nothing without you. So, if you're not subscribed, what you'll do is press subscribe down below and press the little bell notification so when I do make a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks for watching. Until next time, this is Samuel Junction, signing off.